Right. So we'll uh, do a little um, strain hardening example here uh, before we go to class. All right. So our little example here, we've got a rod that is stressed in a tensile direction at 600 megapascals. Uh, what will happen to the rod uh, when the load is released? Okay, that's your first question. Go ahead and pause and answer the question. I'll be here in cyberspace. All right, so then uh, the rod experiences some spring back. That is, it's gone through some elastic change about interatomic forces being stretched, those atoms being stretched apart. It's been through some plastic change, which involves the change in the microstructure. Um, the worked metal uh, will have the same modulus of elasticity as the original metal. Um, so find out what the uh, modulus of elasticity is of that original uh, aluminum. So you can find that from um, the stress strain diagram. So think about what the modulus of elasticity is. Going to the next slide. So we know that the modulus of elasticity, hopefully you figured out that we're going to find that by finding the slope. So we can find the slope here. Uh, the question three, if the rod springs back at this same rate, what will be the permanent set of the rod be? Uh, that's as how much uh, strain will remain. So we know where we are at the end when that stress has been applied. We know that the modulus of elasticity of this strained hardened metal is the same as the original. Uh, and so with that, we want to figure out what our permanent strain is. you're not sure, you can go back to the lecture and look at the strain hardening diagram we have there uh, and see how you might find that, um, that final strain, the plastic strain. And on to the next slide. So the way we find that is we were at B, right? And we're going to go, we're going to follow that same modulus of elasticity back down to wherever the stress is zero because we've removed stress. So we want to know what our strain is going to be when we have a stress of zero. Um, we can use this equation here. Um, essentially, really, we're just thinking about um, the geometry of this, uh, of di of this diagram. So the initial strain, or the plastic strain, is 23. We're going to go backwards by this amount. In other words, the, that strain is going to be smaller once the elastic part of the strain is removed. Um, and so we can figure out, we know the slope of this line. We know how far it's going. Um, and so we can use this term here get us our unloaded stress. Okay, all we've done here is say, okay, I'm at 600 millipascals. Every 75,000 millipascals, I'm going to reduce my strain by one. Okay, and so we're saying the strain is being reduced by this fraction, uh, which is the part of um, the strain that is, that is elastic. So the original elastic strain was 0.6 to here, 0 0.006. The final elastic strain is a little bigger, right? Because you've actually gone higher. Um, and so there's more time for it to move backwards as, this, as it moves through the diagram at this point. So the rod remains, retains a permanent strain of 0.4. 
zero, one, five. The modulus of resistance for the original metal can be calculated with this value. And so we can go ahead and find that. The modulus of resistance is the area under this curve, right? And that tells us something about how much energy can absor be absorbed before we uh, experience some plastic deformation. The reworked metal has a different energy of resistance, right? It can absorb more energy before it's going to um, be plastically deformed. So you can see that the energy or the modulus of resistance is larger for the strain hardened metal. What does that mean about these two metals, the original metal and the strain hardened metal? That's your last question for the day.